Hey guys, so um, today I'm going to be showing you proof that global warming is real. And right now I'm in the weather app. I'm, I add like random cities and all um, just so I can see, um, you know, the weather and how it's going to be like in there. And as you can see, the temperature is really high. And as you can see, like look at all the temperatures for that week. Well, this week. Um, but this is how the world is right now. Currently. And it, it's very bad because of all of these heat waves. And nobody wants to listen to us that global warming is real. This tweet went live around an hour ago and I want to address it before it inevitably makes its rounds on social media because it's gonna freak people out. You no, know, cause I kinda freaked out when I read it too. Anyways, for those who are visually impaired, the tweet behind me reads, breaking, scientists say the current rate of extinction could wipe out most of Earth's species by 2200, assuming no fundamental economic system change away from growth. So it's true that species are going extinct at an alarming rate and that rate is increasing thanks to things like climate change which is also getting worse thanks to things like the need for unlimited economic growth. But most of Earth's species going extinct by 2200 is literally the worst case scenario. And we are not quite on that trajectory, nor even if we were, would it be set in stone. We can prevent this. We have the tools to prevent this. We need to address climate change and put more funding, time, and effort into species conservation. And at the end of the day, it's okay to feel scared and angry about this, because I am. Have you met the woman that discovered global warming? This was 170 years ago, by the way. In 1856, a scientist named Eunice Foote put different gases into test tubes and placed them under the sun to measure their temperature change. So Eunice discovered that carbon dioxide and water vapor both heat up under the sun significantly more than the other gases she tested. And the buildup of carbon dioxide today is one of the major causes of global warming. Eunice writes in a published paper that an atmosphere which contained an abundance of carbon dioxide would heat this earth significantly. It's widely accepted now that she is probably the first known person to talk about global warming in this way. So what happened to Eunice? Well, nothing. Three years later, a guy named John Tyndall published a paper that examined pretty much the exact same concept. He said that carbon dioxide and water vapor both absorbed and radiated heat, and it blew up. John coined the greenhouse effect, and he's considered one of the fathers of climate science today. There is no proof that John knew about Eunice's work, but he did publish a paper about colorblindness in the exact same edition of the exact same journal that Eunice had published her paper about gases three years prior. So... As for Eunice, she faded into obscurity. Her paper was presented at a conference, but she was not the one to do it. A scientist named Joseph Henry did it for her, and she soon disappeared from science history. There are not even confirmed photos of her today. The ones that you see here, I mean, they could be her, they could be her daughter, they could be her sister. To no one's surprise, at the time, women were generally only considered amateur scientists, and her paper was only discovered by a geologist in 2010. It's assumed she didn't have the funding or resources to continue her research. So the next time anyone tries to start a sentence with, well, historically men, just remind them of all the Eunices that history forgot. What Earth will look like by 2050? This is what our Earth is going to look like in 2050 if we don't fix this damn global warming that's going on. And people are not taking this as seriously as we should. Okay, do y'all understand if we don't meet and cut down fucking the pollution, meaning electricity, cars, being fuel efficient, all these things, eating out at restaurants, like all these things causes pollution. And do y'all understand if we don't correct this, we are looking at the apocalypse. We are literally looking at heat waves all around the world, floods, fucking earthquakes. We are looking at catastrophe.
Now, I don't know about y'all, but ain't nothing more important than life. Okay, and I don't know about y'all when I say this, but my babies will be only in their 30s come 2050. So therefore, as their parent and as all of us parents, we should ensure that our kids have a safe environment to live here on Earth. Y'all are not being y'all 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 ain't taking this seriously. Do y'all understand once this happen, people will not survive because the air will be so bad. Do y'all understand that? The heat will be significantly so bad, it will start killing off everything in the ocean. Now, I'm not a science whiz by far, but I do know our ocean and our trees are our main resources for oxygen. Okay, so let's think about the ocean. There are parasites and everything at the bottom of the ocean that releases this oxygen to us. So if everything at the bottom of the ocean goes, we go. Y'all are not hearing me this shit is vital so what needs to happen is people need to start writing to the government okay say that you're not gonna vote for them if they don't get get a roll on this shit for real peter kalmas is needing billions of climate control activists at this point because the government is just not listening we all know the government is for themselves all men for themselves but it's up to us to make them change that, their mind. Take shit from them. They take shit from us all the time. Stop investing in the government. Stop giving them what they want. All these companies, stop putting your money into it. Protest. Stop. It's not that hard. People did it way before all this. Way before governments was even put in place. It's not hard. If we come together and stop acting so spoiled and, oh my gosh, we can make it. Our children can make it. Oh. Mm-hmm.